saying goodbye All I know is I need to be Somewhere else to set me free I don't know what to do now Need to figure it out But I don't know how I hope the wind will carry me And take me away to where I should be everybody um, basically just a little bit of a video to make sense of what we were doing at HQ um, at the first cut silage for farmer grass so um, bottom line we had the old 1100 and bear in mind this is a 1998 bodied harvester and um, JF Center taller more modified it put in a different drum and uh, when we had it in the 1455, uh, just maybe we had a few wee issues. And uh, so Alan uh, came up last night. He did a bit of work on it, just tightening and tidying a few things up. And uh, she's running well. There's still a couple of wee issues, but I can't reiterate the point enough that you're going to have a few issues. But what we're trying to do is show that these things can still work and do a good job. 8.20 Finn, I drove it most of the day yesterday until Alan got here. Well, Owen needed to get a, a load or two on it as well. He was mad to get a run on it as, to be perfectly honest, um, I really wanted to run in the 310R with the, the big Smith trailer. He's running lovely on it. So we had a few different things we were trying at grass uh, this time. Um, Farmer Gareth is his 155 John Deere to his wagon. He's at fully set up again with new set of blades and the pressure up on the wagon. And uh, the 155 is working hard, let me tell you, driving it. The fast track was on the K2 trailer, so a little bit of a success story there for Richard Irwin, who we'd worked with K2 last year. I actually managed to sell a few uh, without even trying a few of their curves. Uh, they've come in and that particular one was uh, hired from Logan McMaster, who had two brought in.
Johnson Geltman asked us to take a, a look at the 120M, the new type 120M. Um, remember we had the 120M with the loader and uh, tried it and I asked them had they any wee rakes or tethers and they work with the SIP brand. And to be honest with you, we, we got it going but Ruth here, um, got her set up in the 120M so Ruth works along with us here, doesn't do much tractor work so we got her tedding and she loved it. And then on the 120M as well, we got Farmer Garris' daughter, who we all know as Farmer Lexi. We got her up and running on the uh, 120, doing the, the, the rowing with the new SAP uh, rake as well. Now, Farmer Garris has his own wee rake, but it was just nice to get that going. And the 120s, absolutely, my wee tractor is a great punch. Gary's on the pit then. Uh, after he was on the fast track a while yesterday, but um, hold on, I swing around here. Do I see them coming in the background? Um, but Gareth, he did a bit about Greg Murlo and then Gary wanted to test out the new five ton linkage and see was it really up to the job. So, the big girl just tars it. And you know something I'm going to say, the big tractor with the 900s on her, her biggest problem is width. She was making a lighter footprint than the fast track and the K2 was yesterday, and you could see that in some of the tender places. To be fair, that JF did about 60 acres yesterday. Some of it good crop, some of it not so good a crop. It's just the year it's been with the cold uh, weather and bits and bobs. But look, two reseeds were in that there and there was a lot of wee stones and the JF is chopping it a little bit longer because of that. But I think that wee bit of length is sitting Farmer Gareth, to be 100% honest with you. So with this field and two more hills to do, and that's it, finish silage all, all, all in for the year. So. We'll see if she keeps running. As I say, there was only two minor issues yesterday. And I think the tethered out grass and old JFs aren't really designed for tethered out grass. Actually, what machine is designed for tethered out grass? So that's pretty much it, guys. Just an update of what we really were trying to achieve here. I mean, we know this isn't a typical rig. We know we have the big trailer for the fast track and the idea is we want to take it round a few guys and let them experience the big trailer but it's nice to get a bit of experience with it ourselves before we put it in the hands of someone else. Obviously we need it just getting hitches and stuff sorted for it. But she is, she's she's running nice there. There's no there's no doubt about that. putting in the first foot silage here for Farmer Gart. I was uh, lucky enough to be put on to the 310R and the new Smith trailer. Well, I don't know was I lucky enough or whether the lads wanted me to put the first scratch on the trailer. But it seems to be going well so far anyway. This trailer here behind me is Super Cube Pro. It has all the bells and whistles. Four steer, front and back steering. There's a new feature on the trailer Sam is putting on them. They're, uh, quick drop once you tip you float your tooth spools and the trailer lets down in half the time as it does to take the tip just saves less time in the yard tipping and quicker time to get out of the loader man's way because <laughs> when the load is tipped up the loader man doesn't want you sitting there too long because you'll see here when the load is tipped it nearly fills the whole slab it might seem like a bit of a big tractor to have in front of it but for hilly conditions you nearly need this size of a tractor Maybe not this size, but you need to wait. A couple of tight gates around here, but the Smith seems to be following in well. 
as Sam said when we picked up the trailer, he says if you can get the tractor in the trailer, I'll follow, and he's not too far wrong. I first seen the triaxle smiths when Robinson Farms over in New Mexico got their trailers. I was there when Holton Robinson came over from America when he first seen the Smith trailers and to be honest I thought they were a savage well built trailer. I was lucky enough to have a drive of them and see how they went over there and I thought to myself I'd hard to see them working back home because they were so big that time and between talking to Garrett earlier on the year and he was explaining to me that he's thinking of working alongside Sam. I said it'd be a great opportunity to get one up and see what they're like. But when I'm on this today, there's no bother to it. Even, as you can see, the trailer's high enough. Sam made up a, a lower crate, so we're able to blow in off the JF. It seems to be going good so far, anyway. In the silage game now, capacity is a big thing. The more you can fit in a trailer, the better. The less drivers you need, the less wear and tear on the road you're having. But the trailer also needs to travel. And where we were here yesterday, it seemed to be traveling no bother at all. There's a couple of wet spots in the bottoms of the fields, no problem at all. There's 560 tires on it, it just seems to travel on. To be honest, who would not like this combination? The 310R and the Triaxle Smith Super Q. I don't think you could get any better combination to drawing grass, to be honest. I was on it now the last two days and it's a lovely tractor to drive. Loads of power, well able to handle the trailer. It'll be interesting now when we get the fast track on the trailer and see how it pulls with it. Should go good. Fast track is a gutsy, gutsy tractor. It's crazy how much the, the Smith trailer holds when you're filling alongside the JF. It takes a fair long time to fill it. Not just as noisy as the 1455 anyway. Last time I was working this harvester last year was on the 1455. I couldn't hear for about two days. So I kind of wanted to see what it was like on the Vario tractor. I actually never drove a JF on a Vario tractor before. So I said I'd give it a go on this and see what it was like. So I got sneaking away from work then yesterday evening for the day. I can't really hide it from Philip now because he might see this on YouTube. It's doing all right for a 20 odd year old harvester. Yeah, it's not particularly easy lifting, you know, lumpy kind of headed and raked up stuff with, a, with an older harvester. The JF, you know, I suppose same as all trailed harvesters, they're like a nice steady swart, like, but this one has been modified. So there's a, like there's a 1355, well, I won't say a, a, a drum out of, it's it's modelled on the 1355 rotor. So the knife pattern is slightly different in it. And the feed roller unit has been modified to allow the feed rollers to open a bit wider. Basically a simple enough procedure, just take a piece out of the feed roller housing and put a different spring on it and, and, it, and it lets them open that bit wider. But basically whatever the auger can take, the harvester can take. The biggest problem with this is the trailers are so high you just can't really see into them. So you're kind of relying on the, the trailer man to keep the right side of you. 